welcome to the island lamb and this is episode eight from block island to sweden yes i have a lot to talk about today but i'd like to start with my opening um video where you got to see a little bit of the greenway trail system on block island and we have 28 miles of beautiful manicured um, maintained greenway trails and they run throughout the island. They sometimes cross over a country road and then go down into a hollow or up over a hill and down through a valley. And I just wanted you to see how green the grass still is in November and those beautiful trails. And so this is again, a beautiful time to come to Block Island and enjoy its nature. Um, the title, Block Island to Sweden, I'll get to the Sweden part in a second. I just wanted to review a little bit what I have on it. The way I'm sitting, I really was just wanted to focus on the yoke of this sweater. But if you recall, this is the um, beautiful sweater designed by Isabel Kramer. This is the ready to fall sweater. I used um, Cascade Eco and Hemp yarn. I talked about this quite a bit in a previous episode, but I had it on the mannequin and I like to always show you after I've blocked it, how it looks. And one of the things I mentioned to you was the shoulder shaping and the neck shaping and how beautifully this sweater fits. And I think I said it fits like a glove and it does. It's a joy to wear and I picked up the stitches on the neck and I worked up and I think I did an okay job with that. The sleeves are perfect for me and I have this on with black jeans and boots and I'm really enjoying it. Okay, so Black Island to Sweden. This is a story I, I have told anybody who will listen to me. I've told my mother, of course, my husband, my friends, um, and I wanna share it with you. So in the Bohuslän region of Sweden, from 1939 to 1969, this Bohustikning knitting style became world famous. And it all started because in, the early, in, the, in 1939, or certainly after the stock market crashed and into the depression in Sweden, um, jobs were few and especially for women. So a woman by the name of Emma Jakobsen basically formed a co-op and she did some research and she sourced some of the finest fibers in the world and brought women together. And most of these women already knew how to knit and were already pretty good knitters. That is definitely a cultural um, learning experience in that part of the world. So she brought these women together. She designed the first few of these boho stickening sweaters. And then throughout the years, she found other designers who designed them. And these women were trained and taught how to work with these fibers, how to work in these patterns. And so I'll start with this particular pattern. Now this, is, this pattern is a little bit later, but it's the one I have that I can show you. What is very unique about Bohu Stickning is, first of all, it's knit on very fine needles. This was on a US zero and a US one and a half. So we're looking at what we come to know as, you know, store-bought machine looking knitting. That's how fine these stitches are. So that was one of the things that was unique. The other thing that was unique were these beautiful yokes. Now this particular yoke is not the most complicated one, but I believe I have maybe 10, eight to 10 colors involved. Um, and, the, and, and so that was what was uh, unique, as well as using pearl stitches. Now, those of you who knit in Fair Isle, you know we're usually knitting in the round, we're, always knitting with knit stitches, it's unusual to see pearl stitches in Fair Isle knitting. So the use of pearl stitches was to blur and to create these rounded shapes between the colors. So during this period of between 1939 and 1969, Emma now has other designers designing these patterns, a group of women knitting these, and only 5,000 sweaters were knitted at that time. These sweaters were sold in high-end department stores and were extremely expensive. So the people who were able to buy them were movie stars or royalty. 
And so I'm not able to show you some of the photographs because they are copy right uh, protected photos. But if you go online and if you just, for instance, put in Bohu Stickning and Grace Kelly, you'll see some beautiful photographs of her wearing very recognizable Bohu Stickning sweaters. Ava Gardner, Ursula Kitt. Um, these sweaters were coveted. Now, when I say really fine fibers, I'm talking about Angora and lamb's wool, merino. And she sourced the best quality that she could find. So let's now fast forward. So Emma Jakobsen continues this until 1969, at which time she retires. And it was also a time in history where we were starting to see synthetic fibers, uh, synthetics come onto the market. And there wasn't such a demand for this beautiful handcrafted um, product and also the economy had improved in Sweden so the women were finding other jobs and not a whole lot of knitting was going on at that time so in 1999 a woman by the name of Salverg Gustafsson decided that she would like to revive and it's called the revival period revive some of these patterns now fortunately there is a Bohuslan museum and you can see these designs in that museum. So Solverg wanted to create kits and make the kits available to knitters because you can't buy these sweaters anymore. There may be people who have them in their private collections, but for the most part, they're in the museum. And so Solverg was combing, combing the country and combing the world, trying to find anyone who had their grandmothers or their great grandmothers um, piece maybe in their collection. But what she did do is she went to the Buhaslan Museum and she talked to them about what she wanted to accomplish. And they agreed to let her take one sample, one uh, sweater, and see if she could recreate the pattern and if she could resource the fibers using the same quality that had been seen between 1939 and 1969. So she did. And she was nervous to present the finished garment back. So <clears throat> she went to the museum and got in front of the board and she showed the piece. And interestingly enough, one of the original designers had been invited unbeknownst to her. And she just stared at the piece and stared at the piece. And finally she said, I never thought I would see this knitted again. And so very happily, the museum granted Solberg uh, the opportunity to create the pattern. And they also gave her access to some of the other patterns. And so she created several kits. So you could buy these kits, a knitter could buy these kits from the museum in Sweden and create their own um, sweaters. Now you weren't allowed to resell them. These are um, historical pieces. So she continued on until somewhere in the early 2000s and she wanted to retire as well. And um, at that time, there was a woman by the name of per Pernilla Silverberg, who's living in Sweden, and she's raising Angora rabbits, and she is also knitting. And she knew all about Buhu Stickney because she grew up in Sweden. And so Salverg contacts per uh, Pernilla, and they start talking about um, Pernilla carrying on the tradition. And so Pernilla has now for the most part, we reworked a lot of these patterns to make them have a more modern fit. She had to once again source fibers and work with dyes. She's trying to match original colors. All the yarn is either hand dyed or natural fibers. And because she was raising Angora rabbits, she did not have to buy Angora from China, which is where the Angora had been coming from previously. So I found out about this because in episode 112 and 113 of Fruity Knitting, Andrea interviews Pernilla. And we get, you'll get much more of the background, the history, the collection than I can even begin to tell you in this podcast. So I, um, I urge you to, um, to check out those two episodes. But in the meantime, I just got so excited after seeing the two episodes that I knew I had to buy one of these kits. And so there's a very um, easy to follow 
uh, easy to read in English. It's in Swedish and it's in English. It's so Pernilla's company is called Angora Garnet and you can go online and you can see all the kits that are available and the colors that they are available in. Pernilla will not take special orders and change colors because remember these are the traditional colors, the traditional pieces. But for instance, this sweater was offered originally and now in lemon the body in lemon with this design or this design in white. So this is actually called the lemon pullover, but I ordered the lemon pullover in white. And the Krona, the, the Swedish Krona and the US dollar were, it was actually very affordable, I felt for me. And there was no shipping charges because we don't have an import tax. And I got it uh, in a relatively uh, short amount of time, which really surprised me. So it came in Hanks and I got out my uh, Swift and my winder and I wound this beautiful yarn. And the whole time I was winding, I was just thinking about Sweden and thinking about Ava Gardner and Grace Kelly and how privileged I felt to be able to knit this pattern and keep on with the tradition. So I did make a few modifications. This was supposed to be worked in pieces and then seamed together. And because I was working in white and because I was working in such a fine needle, I did not want to purl any more than I had to. I knew I was gonna be purling for the yoke, but I did not wanna to have to purl for the body except for the ribbing. So I made the decision to work it in the round, which was an easy enough thing to do. I just kept going. And the other uh, decision I made is you had two choices. One was to fold over the collar and sew it down, knit it down, or I believe the other one might've been a rib. I liked the way the stocking knit just rolled and I went with it. So it was worked top down. So you are very involved in the chart and I'll show you what we were seeing. This is what we got. A little sample of all the colors. The chart was very easy to read if you've ever read charts before. I loved that it was in color, that really helped. And <clears throat> once you got past, and so the increases were done, I found it was easier in some cases to not do the increases where it was recommended because maybe I already had two colors going or in, on a couple of rows there were three colors and maybe it was a pearl row. So I reviewed the charts and I chose rows that had either no color because there are a couple of rows where there is no color or only two and without purling, without a purl stitch involved. And that made my life a lot easier. The other thing I, I did that I think made my life easier is I bought chow goo needles. First of all, I didn't have them. I had uh, a set of Addy Turbos and they are clicks. And I just felt like I, I noticed when I knit on them, sometimes I feel that join and I had been hearing great things about the chow goo needles. So I invested in a set of chow goos and I bought an extra um, two, uh, actually a zero and a one and a half small circumference needles to work these sleeves. Now, when you watch episode 112 and 113, you're going to get a chance to see, like I said, the most of a good portion of the collection knit up. And then in episode 113, you're going to hear uh, how Pernilla takes care of these beautiful rabbits. You're going to get to see the rabbits. So she hand cuts the angora off the rabbits. These rabbits are loved and cared for and spoiled. And we learn a little bit about angora. Now, I didn't know a whole lot about it. I think I only ever used it once before on a Christmas stocking for the beard of Santa. But angora is ho a hollow fiber. It's a long fiber. It is... And it's an insulating fiber. It's self-cleaning, extremely warm. So divers will wear angora lined gloves and booties when they go diving. What it doesn't have is strength. So here's where the lamb's wool, the merino wool comes in. So that is going to give you the strength and the angora is going to give you that warmth. And one of the things that uh, Pernilla says is don't worry about this getting dirty. Don't worry about wearing it. You're not going to have to wash it often. It is self-cleaning. I've worn it twice. I wore. I made this last year. I wore it over the holidays. Um, my vision was to wear it with wide leg trousers 
and try to, you know, recapture some of that movie star <laughs> Ava Gardner look. And I and I think that the sweater, regardless of what you wear, the sweater does sort of uh, give you the feeling of that traditional look. So I just wanted to share that with you. And thank you for um, t taking the time to go through that with me. But definitely check out um, Fruity Knitting. Okay, so I also um, wanted to thank uh, a viewer. So last episode, I talked about my jeans jacket that I have been wanting to recreate and how I've been searching for the pattern and I finally found the yarn and the pattern by Circulo Yarns, which is located in Brazil. And I talked to you about my mom's jean jacket that she made when I was uh, 16. And so I showed you I, I, a sleeve and told you I had made the two front pieces and I mentioned to you that I did not follow the pattern. I was supposed to crochet a band around the back at the two fronts and the sleeves and then pick up stitches and knit. And I said that I wasn't a very good crocheter and that concerned me. So I just put on the number of stitches I needed to knit and I would figure it out later. And I was thinking of picking up and doing a knitted double knit band. Well, I heard from, and I want to make sure I get the name of her. Um, oh, the Golden Bliss. So I want to thank the Golden Bliss. And she has been following me and she said, to, maybe I should think about, think again about trying the crocheted band because she felt that that it would give it structure and strength. And considering that this is a jacket, and the way a jean jacket fits the body. Um, she, she thought that that was the reason that there's a crocheted band on this. So I kind of let that, you know, I thought about that. I, I hadn't finished, you know, the project. I had mentioned to you it was gonna take me a while anyway. I hadn't finished the back. So I decided to give it a shot. So it was cast on, uh, chain, not cast on, chain seven stitches, and then double crochet for 21 inches. And I have to say at first it was a little, I wasn't sure, I, I, it seemed like I was decreasing. I went from seven stitches to six to five and I was like, what am I doing? But I finally got the hang of it. And I think because I've been working continental, it was easier for me to hold the tension in the yarn and I crocheted the band. So here it is. And you know, it looks like a knitted rib band, don't you think? But it is very structurally sound. And then I picked up my 84 stitches and I'm knitting. And I'm really pleased because I think the whole time I've been knitting on this, I've been trying not to think about how I was gonna um, pull the band off, but I don't know why I just didn't follow the pattern to begin with. So thank you very much to the Golden Bliss. I am reading your comments. I want your feedback. Here's a perfect example how you think you, you know, you may have been knitting your whole life, but um, you don't always know what you're doing and you don't always make great decisions. And in some future episodes, I'm going to share with you some of my greatest disasters. Um, <laughs> so anyway, the jean jacket, I am going to I thought maybe I would make the crochet band and then try to sew, you know, or yeah, sew the knitted pieces together. But I just decided I'm just going to rip out those other pieces and start again and follow the pattern and trust in the pattern. Okay. I am not going to show you any progress on the MCAL because I haven't made any last time I showed you. I had worked up clue four on one side. I have the whole other side. I think that if I had been working on that, I may not have come to that conclusion about the jean jacket. Um, I wanted to take the time to talk about the lemon pullover, but I did put another project on the needles because I wasn't working on the MCAL. So when I came back from Rhinebeck, I showed you uh, my acquisitions. And this is the Valley Yarn Northfield 70% Merino Wool, 20 Baby Alpaca, and 10% Silk in the color wine that I bought when I was at Webb's. And I bought this yarn um, with a project in mind. When I first walked into the Webb's store, they had the 
winter catalog samples on mannequins on display. And there was a really gorgeous turtleneck um, with some ribbing. And I thought, ooh, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna make that. And I bought enough to make a sweater's worth anyway. But my mother has been telling me about a pattern that she thought I might like to try. And um, when I was at her house before I went to Webb's when we did our video, she gave me the Interweave 2020 magazine that has the pattern in it for me to take a peek at. So this is the Lori pullover. And I had the right weight yarn. I did a, a gauge. I got a perfect gauge on it. And I do like twisted ribs twisted ribbing. And so I said, you know what, I'm going to just go ahead and see how, how it, that feels. So here it is. This is the neck. You see, we have goddard stitches in between these twisted ribs. They're working down on the sleeves as well. When you get to a certain point, you start decreasing these ribs and you start adding some little bobbles. And that's going on both sides and front and back. So now I'm at a point where I'm just stocking, knitting and stocking knit. And I'm gonna knit and stocking knit till I get to the rib. And then when I pick up for the sleeves, I do believe there's gonna be a row that's gonna have those bobbles and then they're gonna be stocking knit. Now I tried this on and I'm not 100% sure about the fit because you know it's, it's, it's really accenting the bust area and I don't always like to accent the bust area, but I'm gonna keep going because this might not be for me, you know? Just because I'm knitting it doesn't mean I have to keep it for myself. I'm enjoying the knit, I'm enjoying the yarn and the pattern. So I think that um, it was a good suggestion by my mom, and who knows, maybe I'll end up giving it to my mom. We'll see. Let's see. What else did I want to share with you today? I think I've been going for 22 minutes, so I think I'm going to say um, goodbye. And uh, we are having, our company did not make it last week because they shut down the ferries because of the remnants of Nicole. And so they're coming this weekend, and I have a few things I want to do to get ready for them, some cooking and some baking. So... I hope to, I will have a episode next Tuesday. I don't know how much knitting that I will have gotten done, but I do have a couple of other pieces I can share with you. So I want to say thank you again. And if you're enjoying these podcasts and you want to continue to see them and um, be made aware, do me a favor and subscribe and then hit the like button because that lets me know you're there and it also lets YouTube know that I'm not just wasting their time because it's a free platform. So I think they like to kind of see what's happening with us out there. So um, again, thank you for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.